everyone and welcome to another Disney planning video. In the lead up to our trip, I'm gonna be sharing with you all the ins and outs of planning our Walt Disney World holiday for 2022. If you're new around here, hello, my name's Brogan and I do lots of home, lifestyle, travel, and of course, Disney videos. You can check the link in the description for the other videos I've covered, including all the details of our trip, what we've planned, what I moved, and everything like that. So please do check that out and click subscribe if you're not already. So today we're gonna be going through my budget. And I wasn't sure whether to do this video, but I asked in a recent um, like chatty vlog that I uploaded and and the response was so overwhelming. So many of you wanted to hear how much things are gonna be costing our, for us as a couple. We don't have kids, so please bear in mind circumstances. We're going for the first two weeks of May, so obviously everyone's trips are gonna vary in price depending on where you stay, time of year, how many people. This is not a video on exactly how much your trip will be because there are ways of doing it cheaper and there are ways of making it more premium. Um, and also I think it's worth bearing in mind that we booked this trip in 2019, so we got 2019 like rates, and then as the years have gone on and we've changed the dates, we haven't actually had to pay much. I think it's only been like 20, 30 pound difference to change our dates and our flights. So that might also be something you wanna consider. And the last little disclaimer before we continue on talking about finances, like I said, this is just my personal opinion. If you don't like discussing money and, and budgeting and things like that, then this video is not for you. And Disney have recent re recently released um, a whole new system they're putting in place for replacing fast passes with Disney Genie, Disney Genie Plus, Lightning Lanes to be able to pay additional to access premium um, rides and that whole um, what's the best word that that whole system I guess is completely new to all of us so I haven't had the chance to try any of that yet I can't give you my honest feedback or opinion and so I'm gonna go to with you my budget and some of the uh, things I'm thinking of, I haven't even got a number next to yet. So we're just gonna go through it all and maybe some of you guys can help me actually um, because I'm no expert, I'm not a travel um, advisor and I'm certainly no holiday um, planner. I'm just a one woman very excited about going back to Florida. Like it's been so long and I'm so excited. Like I said, this is by no means an actual definition of how much everything should or would cost. I'm glad we've got all that over with, okay? Let's just go on to the budget. <laughs> I'm gonna do it in the order of when I'll need things. So the order of going from leaving home to when we get there. And then I'll also talk to you about things I've got, I don't have a space for, like I don't have um, a number next to just yet. So in at number one is insurance, travel insurance. Now I have travel insurance through my bank and I think a lot of people might also. I believe international travel is covered but I need to double check the like terms and conditions because you should always have travel insurance before you book something or as soon as you've booked something but I haven't booked any additional travel insurance yet and the reason for that is because I'm trying to hold out and see what kind of COVID policy or cover we might need so I may need to take out an additional travel insurance on top of what I've got basic cover for, for Benji and I, if that makes sense. I'll also need to cover us for COVID and also all the gadgets that we take, the value of some of the equipment and cameras, um, which I know not everyone will need to bother with. So I'm thinking probably 50 to 75 pound for travel insurance on top of what we already have. Again, I think I'm like over compensating for how much I think things might cost, but that's what I've roughly put down as a guide. I might be able to get something a lot cheaper than that, but that's how much I have previously paid for a two week holiday for two people in America coming from the UK. Second, speaking of COVID, I mean, I don't wanna to have to talk about it deeply in this video because like we're talking about magic and going back to see Mickey, okay? But it's something I do have to consider and that is PCR testing. I haven't gone into depths on this, but just before I started recording, I was having a look at how much PCR tests are and they are coming down in price. So by the time that we get out there next year, it could be a totally different situation. Some airlines are actually offering them for free and different countries require different levels of tests. I was looking specifically at Virgin Atlantic and what they offer because that's who we're flying with. They are offering something um, by a company called Project Screen and I believe it's £55 discounted. I've since found lots of tests as low as £20 to be able to fly out and then maybe when you 
go back home again as well that's the problem that I don't know how many tests will be required to do again very hard for me to budget for this but originally I put in 82 pound per person which is what the cheapest I could find was at the time but even now it's going down and down and down I know people that have had testing for like 20 odd pounds so how much do I budget for this <laughs> I have no idea I think maybe a hundred to 200 pounds potentially for both of us. That's the boring, boring health stuff over with. Let's move on to airport parking. We live in Bournemouth and we'll be flying out of Heathrow. So to get us from Bournemouth to Heathrow, we'll need fuel in the car for that. But I'm, I never really budget for that. Um, but I do always budget for the uh, airport parking because we usually park the car at the airport for two full weeks and again you can do this a lot cheaper you can do external car parking companies and we've done all that before we've also stayed in a hotel where they do like fly drive sort of things where you can park and leave your car at the hotel and they move it for you and then bring it back i've tried a lot of different things to save money but ultimately we m mostly prefer doing valet parking at the airport which sounds much more luxury than it is it's actually not a lot more money than just parking it and then getting a bus in and we usually spend about 100 pound 100 to 120 pound on the car parking for two weeks next up we have the flight and car hire so we have never hired a car in america before previously it was mostly due to our age when you're under 25 you have to pay a premium on top for a separate um insurance policy i've done a disney trip with and without a car they come with pros and cons but the last trip we felt like we didn't need one because the disney transport is so good and we will be using it but obviously there is no um magical express shuttle from the airport to resorts anymore so the car would be the best solution for us when we booked this in 2019 pre-pandemic we were looking for the cheapest best flights and actually the virgin fly drive offer was cheaper at the time than booking directly with virgin atlantic so we booked with virgin holidays we booked for two people in economy flying on a saturday again if you fly weekday or different days it might be cheaper but flying straight directly into um, mco so you can obviously again make it cheaper if you fly to different airports and come in and um, that's just what we chose to do and then included in that price we get a car hire for the full two weeks I have done this previously on a trip without Benj and it worked really well, like I liked having a car. There are major pros and cons, like all things. It will really open us up to be able to try new places, go, go and try new things. It will be helpful for Universal. Um, I'm not sure how we'll feel about driving between the parks, whether we'll just end up relying on Disney Transport and how often we'll use the car, but I will do a full review when I come back and we'll talk more about that and see how actually how much use we get. So this is the first expense we actually paid out fully for. You can pay deposits on flights and things and then pay it off in time, but we did pay up whole thing up front back in 2019. It cost us a total of 1,000 206 pound and 42p so 603 pound each basically which i don't think is too bad that's pretty standard for a flight to florida on a virgin flight flying on a saturday however i got stung didn't i because i should have just paid for premium over the years i've realized that i do have to pre-book our seats if i want to have a much more comfortable flight especially because benji is quite tall he's six foot six foot three and so we much prefer if we're on a, obviously a big plane to get the little two seats you can still get them in economy um but you have to pre-book them because they all go so i did do this which then bumped up the price of the flight even more which you don't have to do this obviously you can just pick the seats close to the time but i wanted to secure us really good seats with leg room for benji so that cost us an additional 54 pound per person per flight so it was 216 pound total that i paid for picking our seats moving on let's talk about the car quickly then i know we've already talked about it but i obviously have blank spaces for gas tolls and extra uh insurance so i don't know what the standard car insurance policy that's included in the car hire is like like how detailed it is do we need to get something a little bit more if anyone has experience with this please do let me know i have nothing in my budget for that yet gas is um cheaper in the us than it is in the uk so i haven't really been able to like figure out how much i drive and use in the uk and how much i might use in america but i've put 100 pound question mark <laughs> it might be a lot more i might be really off with that 
Um, it also depends how far we drive, doesn't it? Like, if we choose to go to the beach or further out, maybe, I don't know, it just depends. So that's hard to budget for, but I'll look into that close to the time. Tolls, it looks like the first toll is only $1.25 and the second toll is toll is only a dollar so i don't think we'll need a lot to budget for that i put 10 pound in but it's just something like a little expense even the small things they do add up so i know at the moment i've talked about all these sort of big expenses that are hundreds of pounds but even those smaller ones it's just something to think about so you're not um surprised when it happens and i know that tolls are something i will have to make sure we have money for the next big expense the biggest one let's be honest is our hotel and our park tickets so we originally booked um, all star sports but sports is currently closed as i'm recording this they are due to reopen next year but um disney actually offered to move us to pop century and the cost for the hotel and the tickets was 2930 pound together booked through attraction tickets who are a previous brand partner of mine however this is not an ad we've had no discount we booked everything as we would just as a customer we paid a 200 pound deposit and we owe our final balance at the beginning of march included in that we also get a few extra perks so since booking the dining plan got taken away, so that was a huge blow and was a massive part of the expense of the hotel and tickets. Um, I think the tickets we get 14 days to the price of seven and Memory Maker is included, which is the photo package. So all of that is a pretty good price. But instead of the dining plan, they've offered us $36 dining credit per room per night. So we get $504 credit to spend on food. Um, and then we also get a I want to say it's a hundred dollars but now i think it might be 200 i think it's a hundred dollars gift card that we can spend on merch or food or on property so that's the biggest expense the hotel and the disney tickets let's move on to disney genie actually disney genie plus so this is a new thing that's coming in to play it's 15 dollars per person per day plus additional costs for individual rides. We know straight away that we're gonna, not gonna use it every day because we're not gonna use it on the day we land. We're not gonna use it on a universal or water park day. If we only go into the parks in an evening and wait times are low, we might not use it. So let's just argue $15 per person. Let's times it by, should we say nine days? Is that realistic? Let's say we used it for nine days. That's $135 per person. So times that by two is 270 so let's let's if i put a 250 fifty dollar budget in for disney genie it's a it's a big expense especially if you've got kids that will double that i don't know how good value for money that will be how quick it will skip rides in comparison like if you're talking hey it's 15 dollars per person per day but it's a five minute wait for your favorite ride in comparison to two hours for me it's kind of a no-brainer and it just means you have to sort of shimmy your budget around. Maybe I spend less on merchandise and going out for meals and stuff so that we get the opportunity to ride the rides we love. Or it might be a case of, do you know what? I'm happy waiting 30, 40, 50 minutes for most of the rides, but I'm going to pay a premium for Flight of Passage and Rise of the Resistance and the ones that are like really important or they're really long wait times. So it's really difficult for me to sit here and tell you how much I'm going to personally budget for it because I'm going to make a decision at the beginning of next year once I've seen some vlogs and some of my friends have been and gone and done done it and told me if it's worth it or not and whatever. I think, honestly, I'm kind of excited about it. I'm kind of excited about the opportunity to see how different it will be and not having your fast passes like set in stone because in the past, obviously we've had free fast passes, but we've had to do the ones that I've booked 60 days in advance uh, whereas this might give us more freedom and flexibility. Maybe we walk into the park and we only do one ride. Maybe we want to walk around Epcot and not do a single ride because we've been there and done it before. If you've got a first trip and you've never been before, maybe Genie Plus is an absolute game changer for you. Obviously, it goes without saying that you can still queue for rides. We have no idea what wait times will be like at certain times of the year. Um, you don't have to pay anything additional if you just want to do the standby lane, if that makes sense. But it's quite likely that Benji and I will because we don't like waiting for things. <laughs> Let's move on to Universal tickets, speaking of tickets and things, because Universal um, can be a little bit expensive, but I personally think well worth it. Benji loves Universal, so do I. I have been looking at potentially putting us in a Universal hotel for one night. 
if I get the right hotel at the right price, they actually include their express passes as a perk for being a hotel guest. Just had a look at our attraction tickets invoice and the Universal Orlando three day Explorer ticket for an adult for 2022 came to a total of £285 each. So it was a total of £570. Again, we only paid a deposit, £50 deposit. So we owe £520 in March, just before we go. But also we've got a couple of freebies. We've got an Orlando dollar off drinks digital card. And we also have an Orlando VIP shop and dine for less digital card gold. So I don't know actually what either of those things are. Um, if anyone's used them and is like, yeah, Brogan, they're amazing. You're going to save so much money. Um, tell me, maybe I need to do a bit of research on what both of those offer, um, us, but yeah, very excited about that. That's really cool. So, um, that's what we paid or what we booked anyway, via attraction tickets. I have also worked with Universal before and they've kindly gifted me tickets in the past and they've also very kindly given us um, express passes. I have put it in the budget at £132 on top, £66 per person per day I think it is. Right okay so it's $70 if you want to skip one one ride once per day so if you were to do the mummy you could only skip the, the queue once. Or they do an Express Unlimited, which means that I could basically go on that ride over and over and over. Keen to look into the Unlimited Universal Express because we only ever normally spend one or two days at Universal. I normally factor in once a week. So once on the first week, once on the second week, and then Volcano Bay. Try and get everything done on the one day we're there in the first week and then whatever we missed in the second week um, is sometimes a challenge and it depends how busy the parks are. It's something I'm looking into about having it in our budget because I think it's personally worth it. I think the express passes are really good. So you can see why I'm kind of keen to maybe have a stay in a Universal Hotel. However, it makes it a little bit complicated on do I then cancel one night and then change my booking, our Disney bookings? Or do we just pay on top and then we have a hotel in Disney and then a hotel in Universal? But that feels like a waste to me. I'm not 100% sure. If you've done it before, let me know. I don't want to do it at the beginning or the end of the trip either because I like to finish and end on Disney. So that won't work for us. But I'm not quite sure. I've been looking at all the options, but I have put it in the budget potentially. Next thing I wanted to talk to you about was Cirque du Soleil, which is a show that's coming to Disney Springs in partnership with Disney. Cirque du Soleil are a huge um, worldwide company. Most of you will know who they are and what they offer. They do shows all around the world. And I actually wanted to go and see a Cirque du Soleil show when I was in Vegas, didn't get the chance. And then I thought if I ever go back, that's where I'd want to see it. Cause I saw it once when I was a kid. And it's one of my earliest memories of seeing a proper show in London and it was incredible. And then when I saw the partnership with Disney, I booked straight away and I booked, so this was the first time round we thought we were going, I booked uh, the cheapest ticket. So there are different colored seats. And I think I booked just like green or blue, whatever the cheapest was um, for like 80 or 90 pound per person. And then those tickets got canceled and we got refunds. But when I went to rebook it recently, like a few weeks ago, they reopened up and I changed my mind and decided I wanted to put us in slightly better seats just because for us it's going to be Saturday in the middle of the holiday of our, of our of our trip and it's going to be a really lovely date night it's a special experience it's one I've wanted to do for years now I felt like it was worth paying a little bit more to have slightly better seats but now I look at the seating plan Honestly, I'm pretty sure you can probably get a good view from anywhere because the show is like so big and a lot of the performers are like aerial performers, you know, so they're in, they're, they're flying around the place and whatever, but I don't know. I basically ended up just on a whim paying fully outright for these tickets the other day. So they were £247 total, £123.50 each. Um, so they were actually $337, which is really expensive but you're paying for a good show that's what 
two hours long. We got the pink seats in case any of you care, but I have booked that delay. Really excited about it. Can't wait to tell you if it's worth it and what I thought of the seats. But again, it's a real personal thing and it's the it's, it's one of the only things also bar the flight that we have paid outright for. Everything else is either deposit or I'm just budgeting for when we get there. Next thing I don't know what the hell to budget for is food. So as you know, we have this $500 dining credit and I have no idea how many date night dinners we're going to want to do at places like Cowfish and I want to go back to La Cellier. We'd like to go to Ohana. Um, so I have no idea the cost of a lot of those like premium nice sit down meals are going to cost. Um, so I do need to have a little look and see what we spent last time. How much are we going to be eating on property once we've finished spending our $500 credit? Because that will only get us so far. That won't cover us for the full two weeks, especially if we eat breakfast, lunch and dinner. And then are we realistically going to be eating a big breakfast? Maybe we don't do breakfast. Maybe we have snacks from Target and then we have like a bigger lunch. Or maybe we skip lunch because it's quite hot and we just want light snacks. And we just have a big breakfast and then a big dinner. So I am struggling to put a price on how much I think we'll need. But at the moment I've roughly put in £700 per person for the two weeks. So we're looking at 1400 ish give or take. I will just say Benj and I, when we go away, we like to be able to buy everything or anything we want we like to be able to enjoy all the drinks we like to drink around the world in epcot like i said we like to have like um, a wine however if we are going to be paying for things like disney genie plus will we want to eat a bit cheaper maybe we eat some meals off property maybe we use these dining uh what are they called i need to research this orlando dollar card vip dine for less cards maybe we use those and we eat more off property and then we spend less maybe it's more like 500 pound per person this also is not factoring in the dining credit so maybe it's more like four four hundred four five hundred pound per person 250 pound per person per week plus you have to think about tipping and tax on top speaking of tipping i do actually have tipping as a section but i haven't put a budget to that we always tip our housekeeping or mousekeeping in the hotel every day we leave a few dollars out and I will be making little pouches so they can take their dollars out. Obviously we don't need to be tipping for like quick service or if we buy things um, at a window and, and trolley carts and stuff, but if we do out go out for dinners, tipping is normal. And obviously we would always tip, so that is something to budget in, but again, I have no idea what. And then last but not least, the only thing I haven't quite put a budget or price to is shopping. I am gonna wanna go mad on shopping and I like to have a few hundred dollars to myself to spend. We've got a gift card as well, which would be great. We can buy some things together for the house, but I like to be able to buy clothes and pins and mugs, all the merchandise, guys. I like to buy it all. So I have no idea how much I'm gonna need for spending wise. It basically ends up coming to around six to 7,000 pound total. And that is everything, absolutely everything covered. It is very expensive. I think in the past I budgeted like 2,000 ish each um, and now we're looking closer to three. Easy. And I don't know whether that's because Benj and I are willing to expand our budgets more as the years have gone on. We have a bit more money to spend. We have our house and we've done a large portion of the renovations now. We've had three years to like add to our Disney pot. So I think just circumstances wise we've got a bit more money to play with. But it is, it is a really expensive holiday. It's one that we don't do often. Going back to Florida is a big trip for us and I don't imagine we'll be back there until probably my 30th or the year we both turn 30, I'm not, I'm not sure. I hope you've enjoyed listening to me waffle on about how much things are gonna cost and I would love to hear your input. What areas should I budget less for or put a lot more to? What are you doing? What have you got in mind? Is the trip now a lot more expensive for you? Has it priced you out with how much things have cost and whatever? Because COVID has changed things for a lot of people. So let me know your um, plans and holidays. I'd love to hear. I love chatting to you about them. So leave them below. That's all from me. Thank you for listening. I'm going to put that aside. Edit this video for you now and uh, have a lovely rest of the day. Thanks for watching.